views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of the station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to a paranormal show unlike any other. The Ghost Helper Show with your guides, Tina Irwin and Laura Van Tyne. Where the paranormal is more normal than you think. We are seasoned psychics who once led normal, everyday lives just like you. Until the paranormal world refused to be ignored any longer. We have listened to countless dead tell their stories and we are sharing that knowledge with you. Join us each week as we take a piece of the paranormal and explain how it works using true ghost stories, the tales that the dead have told us. Our intention is to offer new insights and understandings of the paranormal pandemonium which surrounds that mystical fourth dimension and how it impacts our normal everyday lives. The Ghost Helper Show with Laura and Tina, teaching the living to help the dead, starts now. Welcome everyone to Ghost Helpers. I'm Tina Irwin. I'm here with Laura Van Tyne. Our show is all about understanding that the paranormal is far more normal than you think. And our show today is all about understanding how not to become a ghost. And we're sharing this because so many people don't cross over that it might be nice to know what do you do. And we're not doing this to scare people, but to inform people about what to look for when death comes. What do you What can you understand? How can you help a loved one who may be going through a death process? And basically, we're all going to leave our physical bodies at some point. So maybe we should maybe we should have called the show Ghost Prevention. Right. And it's about we all die, but our soul lives forever. And that, I think, is the key point. You know, all of these great beings, Christ, Buddha, et cetera, talk about life everlasting. They talk about death everlasting. Or compost. Or compost. So. (laughs) Okay, but before we get started. Yeah, we want to say thank you to the Oil Lounge for uh, sponsoring this show. It's the oillounge.com. And this is, I think, a great time to talk about one of our favorite products from them. Frankincense oil. So here, here's a thought here for everyone. Um, if you need some holiday gifts, I would totally check out the oillounge.com. And one of our favorite things is frankincense and when we go back to the gifts of the, of the Magi, what were they get? What was the ch- Christ child given? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold okay. everybody gets, but no one ever asked the question, why frankincense and myrrh? Why, why was he given tree sap? Right. Because myrrh turbocharges frankincense <laughs> and it has a and, super high frequency. And they sell the resins and they sell the essential oils of frankincense and myrrh. It's a very high frequency substance, which helps us with some spiritual protection and even healing capability. So go check out the oillounge.com and check out the frankincense. And, you know, there's also all kinds of other wonderful essential oils, you know, orange and lavender, which are great. Clove, nutmeg, all great kinds of great ones for the season. You know, the holiday season's coming up and it's not always the easiest time for many people because they've experienced loss over the year. And so if this time around you're experiencing, you know, the first, you know, Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever it is without your loved one, lavender oil and orange essential oil are really helpful to mitigate those grief waves. Okay. Don't you have some shout outs? I do. I want to say thank you to the spiritual awakening group and light workers of the world, the one with the two hearts on it for, um, letting us share this show. So thank you guys so much. And if you are watching us on Facebook Live, go check out those groups as well. This week's show was inspired by one of our listeners in Virginia Beach by the name of Yancey. I've known her for for some time. And she wrote in with two really outstanding questions. And the first question is, is a really good one because last week we were discussing uh, the Ouija boards. And I mentioned in passing the the jumanji game right and the ouija board show if you haven't seen it go back and watch it because the feedback we've been getting has been amazing with how helpful that show is in understanding how this board works the dangers of it and what to do if you own one her question was is the jumanji game 
a dangerous game to have like a Ouija board. And I, I have seen the Jumanji movie. And I, I want to point out that the point of that movie is that the game seems to tap into a person's worst fears. And the game is different as it's portrayed in the movies for each person. And so the game comes into your life when you need to work through some really difficult fears or past life issues. And so it brings all that to the surface, which is not always pleasant. If you have the game and you're not sure, wrap it in some salt and foil and well, see and this if it works. It is important also if you have in your possession a Ouija board, take that Ouija board. If you can't break it and rip it in half, that will help break the magic. And yeah, I'm using that word magic. And burn it if you can. If you can't, wrap it in aluminum foil, shiny side in with salt. And the reason why we add salt to it is that salt cleanses in all dimensions. And if you want to learn more of these kinds of spiritual tools, if you really want to put on your spiritual safety belt, we highly recommend the psychic self-defense course. Okay, enough said. So we're always saying that the paranormal is more normal than you think. And I think because it's our tagline and it's so true because we thought we led normal lives until the paranormal intervened. The problem is when we die, we're all going to become ghosts. That will become our norm. So our, you know, paranormal will, the paranormal concept will eventually come to all of us, whether we think we're ready for it or not. So the question becomes, how do you not linger in that paranormal situation any longer? How do we not longer? become a ghost? So that, because, how do and, we help our relatives or our loved ones not become a ghost? So this was Yancey's second question to us. Before our transition or death, what can we do to prevent getting stuck in the fourth dimension? And I, I want to thank you, Yancey, for asking this question. And we do want to encourage anyone to write to us with these kinds of questions that apply to all of us. They're, they're sort of, we call them global questions. They can apply to anyone on the planet. So how do we prevent becoming a ghost ourselves? So we, we talk to the dead a lot and we, we understand <laughs> You're how looking they, at me like I should know. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we talk to the dead a lot and we get a lot of stories about what happened to them and, and their astonishment. What we take after death, we take what we've learned from them because knowledge is power. So when we talk to somebody who's died and we'll ask them, why didn't you cross over? And there are as many answers as, as souls out there, really. Everybody's answer is unique. But I would have to say the number one answer is I had no idea what to do when I died. Nobody ever talks about this. When somebody, nobody told me. Yeah, when somebody dies, we focus in on the living. Oh, your so-and-so was such a good soul. Your mother, brother, friend, or whatever was such a good soul. We focus in on the living and the living's grief. But meanwhile, this soul has left the physical body. And I've talked about this before that really, uh, yeah, I really <laughs> have. <laughs> our physical bodies are kind of like rental units. Okay. We don't keep them forever. We're just kind of utilizing them to house our soul when we are incarnating onto this planet for this lifetime. Okay. And since you get the body you karmically earned from past lives, that's a whole different episode, what kind of body you get. You come in with this body and the body leaves, but who you are as a soul continues. Uh, there's a wonderful song called Going Home that many wonderful people have sung. You know, there's no end. We just keep living on. It's called Going Home. It's a beautiful song. And if you can understand that, then you can take whatever your religious belief is and set it aside and look at the practicality of, you know, what happens when you die. And so, and we're not saying discount your religion. We're, no, not, we're not saying, saying discount your religion, but what we are saying is the vast majority of faiths on the planet, except for the Buddhists, they are the very, yeah. the Tibetans are very specific about what's going to happen at death and what you can do to help yourself right down to the position your body should be in at death, which is fascinating. It's in the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying by Sogyal Rinpoche. 
I'll say that five times fast. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. This author is offering us the soul of compassion and how we can have that compassion for ourselves and for other people. When you're dying, it's not, sometimes you die alone, but you, you really die with a, with more people than you might realize. And the effect of your death is going to linger with them for a very long time. And we've had, I was just editing a, a story for our ghost book too, audio book. And this one ghost is constantly telling me, I'm so angry. I did not die a good death. I wanted to die a good death. Actually, I wanted to go shopping, but really I wanted to die a good death and I didn't, I didn't die a good death. I'm so angry. So I'm just going to haunt this man. It's like, darling, how does you're that not, help you? <laughs> it, how's that working for you? I mean, is that really yeah. doing what you think it's going to do? And she goes, gee, I guess not. I guess I'm still his yeah. prisoner. Well, and let's, let's talk about some of these deaths and we're sharing these ghost stories with you to give you an idea of what it's like on the other side. And I remember one time you and I thought we'd go do a fun trip to Quartzsite for the day. Cause we don't have enough crystal, right? Right. <laughs> and as we're, you know, cruising down the eight East, all of a sudden traffic comes to a screeching halt and over on the median, we see this just literally this giant pile of broken up uh, drywall. drywall. And this guy in the accident dies and he's standing in front of the police officer. Do you remember that? Oh uh, yeah. That's he's a ghost book. Screaming at, he's screaming at this police officer and the police officer of course can't hear him. And he's like, I want your cell phone. I got to talk to my wife. I got to do this. Da, 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 da. He had no idea he was dead. So ghost prevention number one, if you have no idea you're dead, you really don't know what to do. Yeah. I mean, you don't have a clue that some people cannot see their body. Their body's still in that mangled truck. And they are, their subconscious and soul is ejected out of the body. You also see this at accident sites with uh, motorcycle deaths that person's ejected out of their body and the body is not recoverable. Well, and, and, then, and they're standing there going, I wonder what happened. Why doesn't my phone work? That's their very first comment. Okay. I want to talk a little bit about predecessor energy because this does really affect the paranormal and the normal world. Almost every town out there has the concept of dead man's curve, right? Yeah. Or why, death, they call it death Valley, dead man's curve. You why know? is that? So let's talk a little bit about that. And, if you have an accident site and people die in that accident site and those dead people do not know they're dead or do not know what to do, they will stay on that accident site. Meanwhile, other drivers, newer drivers come through and their subconscious or something sees something out of the corner of their eye and they're just instantaneously distracted and they get into an accident. So you create a resonant frequency in a specific location of predecessor energy of accidents, say that fast. Uh, so you have predecessor. You might need to repeat that though. So, because it's, so it's a hard you have, concept to it's kind a of. a tough concept, but everybody knows this. They just haven't articulated it like we are, if I can articulate again. If you have a location where there've been numerous accidents, you might want to consider that there's predecessor energy from all the previous accidents from all the previous people who died in those accidents who are still lingering there because they don't understand they're dead. So you can change the future by simply going to that location with the crossing over prayer card or the crossing over prayer videos. And you can get those at ghosthelpers.com. Go to the prayer section and they're there. They're free. You just play the YouTube video and direct those souls to cross over. Because what we're talking about, when we think about time, we think time is linear right? It just keeps moving forward. But when we talk about ghosts and those souls who are stuck between dimensions, you actually get stacks of time. The ghost who died in 2011, the ghost who died in, you know, 1864, those are stacks of time on that same piece of land. And we've also talked about places that have had repeated fires. Uh, there's a place on a corner on Virginia Beach Boulevard in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And there's a place that has had so many businesses burned down that no one will touch that property. And I can assure you real estate agents aren't going around saying, oh my gosh, we have predecessor energy. It's like, you know, this is a bad luck site. 
It has nothing to do with luck. It has to do with predecessor energy. Let's call it what it is. The physics of that energy linger. And you can, if especially if there were deaths, clear the deaths. That will help a great deal. A couple of years ago, I, I kind of want to keep going on that same concept. A couple of years ago, you and I got a phone call that a friend of a friend was in a really bad accident and the kids were in a coma. And we were asked if we could kind of see and help these kids. And we had spiritual, we had permission to do this. So we were abiding by that spiritual law, which is that sexy term I keep bringing up. (laughs) Well, the spiritual law means you, we had permission. You don't just walk up to somebody and say, excuse me, I'm a psychic and I can help you. And your loved one saying this, oh my gosh, that works on television. It just does not work in real life. You have to say to someone, if they if, usually people ask us, we don't run around and knock on doors. We just don't do well, that. Getting we, people come to us. Getting spiritual permission to to do something or say something is really no different than if I were to go to your home and just walk in without your permission. That is against the law, right? It should, yes, it is definitely against the law. And, and it's against why is it different law. if I were to, you know, read your mind, not that I do that, but, or if I was to, you know, talk to your loved one or remote view your property, um, it's no different as above, so below the rules that apply in our physical mortal life also apply in those other dimensions. And we ended up working with this girl who was in a coma, but what was really fascinating was that the girl was ejected out of her body but that silver cord that aka cord and we've talked about aka cords and akashic records in previous shows was still connected to her but her soul could not find her body her soul essence was still at that accident site and no one was telling her what to do. She was looking for guidance. There was nobody there. She saw a lot of other people at the accident site kind of in a shadowy way. We call it the shadow lands for, for lack of a better yeah. word. And that. that's the name of the story. And it's in ghost stories from mm-hmm. the ghost point of view, volume three. And we were able to help her connect back to her body, but then she had to make a decision. Was she going to live or die? It was interesting. She could see us crossing over the dead who were at the accident site. And she said, oh, I want to go. And I said, it's a one-way door, darling. We had no, we couldn't cross her over. She was still a living person. That's a very important point. If somebody is still alive, you can't say the crossing over prayer and cross them over. Doesn't work that way. It's a kind of an interesting point. If somebody's in a coma, what you can what you can do and we have a we have a prayer book coming out that addresses what to do if somebody's in a coma right and but you know she had a choice to make and it was not ours to give her guidance to that choice we gave her karmically correct assistance and then we stepped away which was the hardest things i've ever done especially with this this young this This young person yeah we gave her the we gave her some help and then we stepped away but you'll have to read the story to find out what her choice was yeah it was it was very that was one of those stories i'll never forget it was just it was emotional We're both moms we both have daughters it was really hard yeah okay so we have that kind of a situation we also have people who die in battle Right. And especially if you live near a battleground or something or, you know, civil war or anywhere in Europe or Europe's been riddled with wars, clearing that property through those stacks of time is really important because if you die in a battle and you don't cross over, you keep living that battle over and over and over. Time in that sense does not stop for the dead until they cross over. If someone has been murdered, some people who are murdered don't know they died. Some people who are murdered keep reliving the scenario of their death. Based on that fear. They're so afraid. They're in that fear that anchors them or locks them into the moments before they died. And they don't know that death has come. It's it's i mean it's it's a tragedy of these things it's a tragedy and a lot of times 
the murderer and the murderee have done played the same scenario in past lives. Exactly. And so until they can, both parties can be crossed over, they just keep repeating that. This is a, and then you have situations, you have murder where children are murdered. When you talked about this in a previous episode. Yeah, the tyrant, oh, excuse me, I didn't mean to say that. Um, <laughs> we have a. The little boy from Portland who died and he didn't cross over. He didn't even know he was dead until, you know, we started talking to him, my daughter and I. So we were able to help him cross over, which was a huge deal for him. And I'm hoping that his family has solace over that. Hopefully. Um, and the only reason you had permission is because he appeared in your he living came to room. My house. If the soul comes to us, we have instant jurisdiction. Because the dead then start interfering with the living. And in the case of this little boy, it wasn't that he was interfering out of malice. He just didn't know what to do. And my home had a resonant frequency that matched his. I had a child the same age. And so when this TV show came on about his him being missing, my daughter and I were talking about him, which brought his soul to our house. Because ghosts travel with the speed of thought. That's right. They're not encumbered by a physical body. The essence of who any of us have always been continues after death. That's a really fascinating and important concept. And it's universal. It doesn't matter who you are, what your culture is, what your belief system is. Those are realities. They're constants. Let's talk about natural disasters all right i had one a number of years ago i think it was back in 2011 when that japanese tsunami hit and i did not know anything about the tsunami coming we don't really watch a lot of tv in my house and i try to keep the news at a minimum um because it tends to be a ghost magnet i at that time i was really trying hard to kind of go shields up and cross and people over and protect us too because it's not just ghosts in that paranormal world but all of a sudden, I had this group of, of Japanese people that were soaking wet. They were ghosts. And they were really, really angry. And there was like five or six of them. And I have no idea how they got in my house. They were, you were watching the, the news footage. I hadn't seen the news footage yet. Okay. I yeah. hadn't seen it yet. And so I'm like, what, what, what the heck is going on? And this group of Japanese people were super, super angry. It's about, a, I'm going to say about a half a dozen of them. And they're yelling at, at each other. They start yelling at me. And I look at them and they're just soaking wet. And I'm thinking, what the heck? They, their ghosts are so soaking wet. I kid you not that the area rug and my floor in my house felt psychically wet. I have no way to explain this, but it, it was wet and it was just crazy. I, I don't even know how to describe it or how that even happened. But it, I did cross them over, and then I realized that the tsunami came and it hit. And then we had more of these Japanese dead coming, and I was crossing them over as fast as I could. But because they came into my house, I was able to help them. But maybe on some level, they came to me so I could help more of them. Well, you look like a helpful person because those souls who are doing spiritual service are visible many times in the ether and you become a light and that's very helpful if you're not afraid nothing to be afraid of you know for you know like in that situation that you can just be helpful okay so let's talk again about some of the, the assumptions you people know have one big assumption and this is not going to win us the popularity contest because this one is a heartbreaking assumption children automatically cross over when they die children are clueless when they die a it, child a baby even a teenager has no let's idea look what at the to logic do. behind this though the logic behind this is that a child usually looks for an adult for guidance once they leave their physical body they're still looking for an adult for guidance and many times you have to see the light and you have to go because we have free will. Even as a ghost, we have free will. This child, or and it can be a person too, 
we're always looking for guidance. Where should we go next? What should we do? What's supposed to happen next? There's an old film, Beetlejuice, that had Sylvia Sidney and Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis, and it's kind of a cult classic. And everybody thinks, you know, you go to this place and you wait in line and they tell you what's going to happen next. Doesn't work that way. Wouldn't that be clever? But it doesn't. And when you have died, there is confusion. If you want, especially if you don't know it's coming. And sometimes if you do know it's coming, you're, there's still a confusion. And most people feel like nobody warned them that this was going to happen. It's not so much a warning as it is, this is your new reality. And you don't understand the science of it, which we're going to get to after our, our next break. Nobody warns you about what you're supposed to do when death comes. You know, they all talk about, you know, do well in this life. That's a great idea. But never discussing what's going to happen when you take your last breath is poor planning. <laughs> it, it, it is. And we're all going to die. And I It's not of, a criticism. I, it's just a reality. And I do want to address, before we go to break, I want to address the child issue again with a, with a small story. And I remember being at the doctor's office with one of my kids who probably broke something or sprained something. I don't know what. And there was a little boy ghost. I remember his name was Joshua and he was about eight years old and he was begging us to get the doctor to help him because he wasn't feeling good. And the doctors keep ignoring him and the child had no idea he died. And he was wearing a hospital gown and he had tubes in his arms and body, which means he died in the hospital gown with those tubes still on him. And I was able to cross him over, but he really didn't understand that he died. And I am sure that his parents are like, oh, at least he's in a better place. And we're going to explain right after the break what, how you can help a loved one or someone cross over. It's a really easy, simple, free tool. And with that, you are listening to Ghost Helpers on Transformation Talk Radio. We want to thank the Oil Lounge for sponsoring us. And we will be right back. Your money is your creational energy when you feed your wealth back into what you love. It signals your choices and returns to you. Tune in to Money Momentum with host Karen Baines and learn the truth about the widely misunderstood creative energy that is the cash in your pocket. Realign the things you can't see to get the results you can see. Listen every month for a whole new hour on how to get the money already aligned to who you are. For more information on Karen and Money Momentum, visit soulwhispers.uk. We have all heard and told ghost stories, but have you ever heard a ghost tell you their story? Ghost stories from the ghost point of view are true tales that these lost and lonely souls have told us. Learn why some souls don't cross over and how you can help them. This is probably one of the most spiritually profound series you will ever read. You can find them at thekarmicpath.com and on Amazon. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. Are you willing to challenge everything you've been taught about life and death? Join Angie Corbett Kuyper on her hit show, Beyond Grief Radio. Redefining loss and grief as Angie shares through choice, present moment awareness, and keeping an open mind that creating anything is possible, even in death. Tune in every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information or to listen to past shows, visit AngieCorbettKuyper.com. 
How do you feel? Just okay? Well, how about you tune in and get ready to be more with The Healing Hour with me, Doc Martin, every third Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. I'm ready for your questions, and I can't wait to help you find the answers. Every month, we'll have a new live call-in show with innovative topics and a powerful hour of healing. To learn more about me, visit DrSharonMartin.com. See you there. I'm going to be here. You won't want to miss it. Welcome back to Ghost Helpers on Transformation Talk Radio. We are we are fixing the the situation with Facebook. Yeah. Okay. A lot of times people who are very religious and see ghosts feel as if they're they are becoming possessed by the devil because they see a ghost and maybe they had a loved one die and they're seeing what they see. That doesn't mean that they're an evil person. It just means that you know, that's just what's happening to them. We're, we're looking at the physics of this, the energy that animates the physical body. When we leave the physical body has to go somewhere. It's a logic trail, right? Energy is neither created nor destroyed. It's the first law of thermodynamics. We didn't make that up. I mean, it just is. And what happens to you after death is in direct proportion to what you believe to be true about yourself. If you believe you were born in sin and you died in sin, why would you believe that there'd be anyone to help you or that you would be worthy of the light? And many people see the light. Lots of movies out there that talk about seeing the light, but you know, you know, you don't cross over for X reason. Give it up. Cross Just over. cross over. And here's another question we get asked a lot. Is every soul worthy or should every soul cross over? Especially murderers. Yeah, so especially murderers, especially those really hard and difficult personalities, we want them to cross over into the heaven world. Why? Because that soul will be restored when you are that violent, that negative, that cruel. That broken. That emotionally broken, there are pieces of your soul that are shaved off life after life. The 23rd Psalm explains that when you cross over, your soul becomes restored. And that's a really, really critical element here. So that murderer or that violent person, that abuser, once they've crossed over, they are now in the hands of the divine, of the heaven world, whatever you want to call it. And they are not lingering as a ghost in that fourth dimension where they can wreak havoc on the living again and again and again. Or even wreaking havoc on the dead. And this is especially true of murder suicides. Yes. They, they try to control from the grave. So we really want to cross those people over. Okay. So this next section really goes back to Yancey's question. If you are, maybe you're really healthy today, but you would like to, um, uh, if you would like to understand that what do you have to do to prepare for your own death, even if you're healthy today? Or let's say that you want to help another person who is in the dying process prepare for death. What can you say? What can you do? What do you need to understand about the dying process? How do you not become a ghost? And the answer is, we're all going to become ghosts because you have to go through, you're in the third dimension. I can't use my hands when no. I'm with an MP3. <laughs> You live in the third dimension. The third dimension is our physical mortal world, right? What we can see, feel, touch, and hear. Then we're going to move to the fourth dimension, which is like a step-up transformer. Like a way station. Yeah, it's a step-up transformer so that you can shift your frequency to move into the higher realms, which it makes perfect sense. You can't go from the third dimension to the heaven world. It's just too big a jump. It's like jumping from, you know, getting out of your, your so, Tesla and going to light speed. You, you <laughs> die, do that. you die, and then you transition out of the physical body. And then ideally, you're going to see that light that comes for you. It does come for everybody, every soul. It can be difficult for some souls to see, especially if they're suffering with depression and they're dealing with a huge fog bank. It does come. But it won't always last forever. 
It doesn't have to ask to last forever. But let's go back to the very, the, the actual mechanism for death. What happens to the physical body at death? And the Tibetans provide, I keep going back to them, they provide the very best description of what happens at death. And, you know, we've been asked this several times, but I was asked this as my brother was dying two years ago. And literally a few minutes before he lapsed into the final coma, he looked at me, you know, with his big brown eyes, and he said, what's going to happen? And I said, can you be specific? And he said, what's going to happen when I die? And, and I shared this at his memorial, and it's on Ghost Helpers. If you just go down, there's a yeah, video Yeah, if you go to it. ghosthelpers.com and you scroll down to the bottom of the page, there's the video, What Happens When I Die?, because this is really good, solid information, and knowledge is power. That's, the, that's our life mission, is to provide as much spiritual service in a practical way as we possibly can. And, you know, and it starts with our own families. And I was super close to this brother. This was a really hard, this was hard for me as he was it, dying. As much as we deal with death, and I think we deal with death more than most people, um, this was tough. You think this was a tough one for you. And this was really hard for me. And even though we know what's going to happen and all of these things, and we, we know he's crossed over, it doesn't mean that you don't miss them. Right. Because love never dies. Love transcends dimensions. It never dies. So he said, what's going to happen? And he said, I want to know what is the process of death? And this goes to the heart of Yancey's question. And I explained that whether you die in this long process, which he had over two days, or it's an instantaneous death, the process is always the same because it's how the physics of mortal bodies work. The vital heat starts to leave the body. The extremities start to get cold. All the organs begin to shut down. If it's an instantaneous death, that happens with the speed of light, practically. But if it's a longer death, then it takes its time. The extremities stop receiving circulation. The body concentrates its energy in the shutdown process. Like you, you don't just unplug your computer, you go to shut down. The body is allowed to shut down the organs. The last organ to shut down is the heart the brain begins to shut down. And as that process is ongoing, the soul lapses into a coma. And then the soul literally leaves the body. The the silver cord is still attached. That's the cord that connects the soul. I can't use my hands here. The silver cord connects the soul to the mortal frame. This is a really important concept. And so as the silver cord is holding the soul to a body that hasn't fully died yet. The soul is out traveling with the speed of thought. It's no longer encumbered by that physical aspect that we have. And a lot of people will note that that person is visiting them or they can feel their presence. I said, so your body is going to shut down all the organs. You're going to leave your body, even though it hasn't legally died. And you're going to travel and visit everyone. I know my dad visited me immediately and he was sick. And I remember waking up really early in the morning. I'm going to say about five 30 and I knew he had died. I could feel it in my solar plexus. It was like something happened, but then I also know that he came into my bedroom and he made his presence known. And so when that happens, That means that you're saying goodbye to your body. You're saying goodbye to the people who impacted your life in a good way or a negative way. Some people are, they say goodbye to their animals, to a location, to things, to projects. They're saying goodbye. They're grieving that because they know they're dying. Now, to prepare for this, understand that this is coming. When it comes and you leave your body, immediately 
ask for angels of transition to stand by you and get ready to escort you to the heaven. All world. right. How do I do that? Let's, I mean, let's just literally be, spell it out, spell it out here. As soon as you leave your body, say, I hereby request angels of transition. You can do this before you lapse into a coma. You can say it inside your head. And you can have a loved one do it for you. Also. I did it for him. You I did this for him. Request. I, I request that angels of transition surround my loved one right now. And that as soon as mortal death has come, that he or she be immediately escorted into the heaven world, into that so that they cross that light bridge immediately in a blaze of light. Okay, I want you to say this again a little slower because I think this is a really good point. And somebody, if somebody wants to, you know, take notes or write this down. If you or someone you love is dying, ask for angels of transition to escort you to the heaven world immediately upon mortal death so that you cross over immediately because the longer you linger as a ghost you will become a ghost you're going to leave your mortal body and as you're zipping around with the speed of thought you it's kind of cool and especially if you had a body that was in pain or was crippled or whatever it it had disease that freeing element oh my gosh that freedom is amazing don't be seduced by that get your angels of transition to assist you immediately You can, if you're a loved one, make sure you ask for that and that they surround that soul or they surround you and they escort you immediately to the heaven world across the light bridge right now. As soon as death comes, do not linger. You will help your own grief, the dead grieve their passing. You will help your loved ones grief because they know where you are. And the last thing they did was they made sure you had angels of transition it doesn't matter whether you believe in angels or not. It works. It works. And the, the other physics of it are automatically there. Yeah. And one of the things that another question we get is, well, I might crossing the loved one over. It doesn't mean that once they're in heaven, they keep coming back here for vacations. What it does mean is that you have afforded your loved one, the soul healing and soul restoration and guidance by divine beings versus lingering in in a wasteland of all kinds of beings i mean every religious text talks about something about the 23rd psalm about fearing evil well if there's no evil in that land why are we fearing it so cross them over because when you know they're safe and you know they've gone home it helps your grief as well you can even if you have requested angels to guide them and they have requested angels to guide them still say the crossing over prayer have it handy have a loved one say the crossing over you prayer can for get you get it at ghosthelpers.com under the crossing over prayer videos and i recently very recently about two days ago i worked with a woman whose grandmother had passed away sweet sweet grandma i mean i love this story <laughs> so <clears throat> excuse me um the relative knew that the grandma clearly knew she died but knew that the grandma hadn't crossed over And what could she do? And she had told me that she has been crippled by grief over this, this person's death. And I explained to her, I said, well, you're, you've got your grief, but you also have, you know, your, your grandma's grief here too. So by crossing her over, it's going to free up your grief. And we crossed her over. The the funny part about this was, this was just like the sweet little near centurion grandma and all of a sudden she says, she says to her relative, don't waste your money on a tombstone. I'm never going to use it anyways, which totally cracked me up because it was just like out of the blue. <laughs> so, and apparently the family was thinking about saving up for this tombstone. Anyways, um, once we crossed her over, my client was like, oh my gosh, I am so free. I can't describe it. I I feel light, I can sleep and all of, she's just going on and on and on. And so it's a really great example of how this works and how important this is. Something else that is important to remember is that death is as natural a process as birth. We don't think anything, oh, somebody's going to have a baby, but look at the variety of ways that a person is born. 
sometimes they're born in a taxi cab or hopefully not on an airplane or they're alone or it's a crisis or there's all these difficult issues. Or it's uh, perfect, right? I mean, or it's just the most perfect, you know, and you know, you, you pop that kid out and you have a hamburger later. It, you know, it, every person's birth is special and unique. Every person's death is special, extremely personal and unique. And And there's no reason to be afraid of it. And I think we need to talk about religions a little bit more. I give you permission. Thank you. Because (laughs) (laughs) religions are important. Faith is important. However, many of these things are written by man to control man. And a lot of times the hell and damnation of, you know, you were a sinner and you were this, you know, we're born in sin, die in sin. That's screaming and screaming it at you. It makes us fearful to die because, gosh, God must not love me. I, I can't possibly cross over because I was born in sin. How many times have we heard that one? I've, I have I crossed over a, a client's grandmother. Her, I crossed over, crossed over a client's mother-in-law. That's who it was. And she said, you know, this woman was beloved. She went to, she went to church four times a week and twice on Sunday. Truly, she did. It's not an exaggeration. She was a woman of deep and profound faith. And so I said, I, I have a, an appreciation for your faith. And you saw the light. Oh, I did. Why didn't you cross over? Oh, I, my, my minister said I was born in sin and I'm going to die in sin. And, and, and therefore, no, God wouldn't want me. I'm just a sinner. My minister said I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I mean, and I didn't, and and if I can imagine if she had been Catholic, she didn't confess her sins before she died. So she's not dying in a state of grace. I'm sorry. How is that helpful? Well, and if we look at sin evokes guilt, right? Sin is a great tool to keep people in, to keep people controlled. It also keeps people walking the straight and narrow. So it has multiple uses. But if we look at, if we change the word of sin to karma, and we talk about these as experiences and learning from experiences, it really helps to elevate the soul versus keeping people chained, chained down to, so, to some construct that is not healthy. We come into mortal life for the experience of mortal life. There's no learning in perfection. If each of us were already perfect, we wouldn't be here. We'd be in the higher realms helping people like us. <laughs> <laughs> And so, and, and I, I think that's just such a, such a critical concept to, to truly appreciate. No matter what your church or religion says, please, if you take anything away from this show is that every soul is worthy of going home, no matter how they lived or how they died. And there's that phrase about my house has many mansions. Surely a serial killer is not going to go to the same place as mother Teresa. No, or Gandhi, or, you know, that's just, it's not how it works. And we have to kind of get beyond our physical construct of what our mind can absorb and think about things at a, in a different manner, basically. We are not just the body we have in this life. If you are facing death or you have to help someone who's dying, and I've done that many times, unfortunately, or fortunately, it's a natural process. Yeah. Death is a natural process. Every, every birth is a dawn. Every death is a night. Each one eternally folding into the next. You know, I, I'm going to switch it up just a little bit, but it's reminding me of the concept of an atheist. You know, some, you know, people live and they say, well, when I die, I'm just going to become compost, right? Or worm food or whatever you want to call it. But even if that's your mentality, err on the side of caution and bring in those angels. I remember a couple of years ago, I had these two atheists. They, they looked like they were farmers, by the way, from like the early 1900s. And they were in my bathroom. They're ghosts, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and, <clears throat> excuse me. And I just kind of looked at them in my bathroom as I'm walking in my bathroom. Like, what the heck are you guys doing? I have no idea how they found me. I got these two farmer atheists. They're wearing overalls. One of them has that classic one overall strap is off their shoulder. And they're just two buddies hanging out. Right. And I'm like, what are you guys doing here? And they're like, 
well, we died and they died, died in an accident, some kind of farming accident. And we're just, you know, hanging out. I'm like, you know, there's more to your death life than just hanging out in my bathroom or wherever you're going. Right. And they're like, what do you mean? And I bring in these two angels and these two farmer atheists were just stunned. I can well imagine that it, they were hilarious. They're like, what do you mean? They're like, I always thought angels were just, you know, for the airy fairy foo foo people. And they were hilarious. And I'm like, no, these are for you guys. And they're going to cross you over. And then this light bridge opens up for them. And they're like, oh my gosh, we had no idea. And they're like, we've been missing out for so long. And they're just going on and on and on. I'm like, yeah, now go so I can go take a shower. Right. <laughs> so we crossed them over, but they were absolutely stunned that, and you had a minister. Yeah. I had a minister once who I crossed over and he was a minister of uh, fire and brimstone and hell and damnation. And if you see a ghost, you're, you're of the devil. Yes. Anybody who sees the ghost or deals with the paranormal is just the devil themselves and they need to be rebuked or whatever it is. And I'm like, why are you here? And by the way, he had a bunch of his con congression congregation congregation. I mean, wish he had Congress with him. <laughs> Can I say that out loud? Okay, so he had his congregation with him, and they're still following him in death, which I thought was absolutely fascinating. And he was clueless. He was clueless. And maybe and in minister school, in the seminary, they don't tell you what to do after death either. They don't. And he was of the likes that this was his lot in life was to suffer for an eternity because he was a sinner. He's a priest pastor, excuse me, he's helping people through their life issues or whatever, but he felt not worthy of crossing over. I just found that absolutely astounding. It is astounding. So if you happen to be sitting by someone's bedside and you are talking to them and they, there's a vulnerability to them. There is a fear. There is this trepidation that they're going to face this alone. And what you can say to them is, you are not alone. I'm bringing in these angels for you. And they're going to stand by you. And I am directing, yes, you can say that word. I am directing these angels to cross you into that light. You're going to see as you leave your body, it's normal. There's nothing to fear. It's a beautiful, simple process. You're going to go into a coma and you're going to, soul is going to leave the body and when death finally comes your heart stops there's no brain activity they're going to unplug you will be dead the silver cord will be cut and as that happens as the silver cord is cut the angels are now free to cross you over and once that person's crossed over they are not going to come back and haunt you the physics don't work that way they can visit right. you they can come to their funeral or their memorial service one then that one moment, they can come to you in the sleep state with guidance, but they cannot, you know, sit next to you at the dinner table. And if a psychic is telling you that, and you know, you cross that person over, maybe it's a thought form, but it is not the person you crossed over. We can guarantee you that. And just because you cross someone over doesn't mean your time with them is over forever. We reincarnate in groups and we spend more time outside of a physical body than in one. And we talk a lot about this in the book, Soul Evolution, Past Lives and Karmic Ties, because we do come back over and over and over. Okay. We want to, we want to end this with reminding everyone that there is no religion in the afterlife, no religion in the afterlife. So you need those angels to cross you over. We want to thank Yancey in Virginia Beach for asking such a really wonderful question. We're really grateful to, to you for that. Next week, we're going to be joining you from Monument Valley in Utah and Arizona. We're super excited. This is the land of the Navajo Nation. Tina and I go there every year. It's our personal retreat. It's our personal retreat where we outline our business plan for the next year. And we're going to be, ex we're going to be sharing some places and things that are some of our favorite things over there and why we go there. And we're going to be talking about 
soul rejuvenation and how that applies to ghosts also. Okay. We want to thank you for listening to Ghost Helpers on Transformation Talk Radio. Have a question or comment, contact us at ghosthelpers, contact at ghosthelpers.com. Special thanks to the Oil Lounge. A thank you to our producers, Nate and Benny. And be sure to check out our books and courses and our other podcasts on ghosthelpers.com. And with that, we will see you next week. Amazing Monument Valley. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.